What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Revival. My name is JJ, and it's time to continue our countdown of my top 100 games of all time. This episode, 90 through 86. So let's just dive right in. Uh, coming in at number 90 is a game I, another one of these that I was way late to the party on, um, but I'm so glad that I finally played, obviously. Uh, and that is Silent Hill 2 on PlayStation 2. Silent Hill 2 is one of those games where if you've played it, you know exactly what makes this game great. If you haven't played it, then the less I tell you about it, the better. It really is a game you have to experience for yourself with as little knowledge as possible going into it for the first time. I will say that if you're a fan of horror, symbolism, metaphorical storytelling, and general mindfuckery, you will absolutely get something from this game. The themes and imagery that you'll find here will stick with you long after you've completed it, regardless of which of the many endings you get. Coming in at number 89 is a game that is the first in the series that at the time was long running, but is the first one that I actually finished. And that is Fire Emblem Awakening on the 3DS. If you've never played a Fire Emblem before, this would be a great one to start with. It's a little easier than previous entries in the series with its ability to turn character permadeath off. Factor in a long and complex storyline, along with different character relationships and the potential for having different children depending on your partner, and the replayability for Fire Emblem Awakening is off the charts. Just be sure to set aside a lot of extra time for this one, because one playthrough can take a good while. And a number 88 is a classic that I wish more people would talk about, but for some reason I just don't get it, because I love this game, and that is Donkey Kong 64. I love this game so much on the N64, and still to this day can't understand why more people didn't talk about it. Running around these big open maps, collecting bananas and coins, getting to switch around to different members of the Donkey Kong family, this game was so much fun! I was even a big fan of the multiplayer, even though I rarely was able to get anyone to play it with me. I'm really hoping for some kind of remaster or even a straight port of this game to current consoles at some point. More people need to give it a chance. At number 87 is a game that I don't have physically, but I own digitally on PC, uh, and that is Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. I included both games because they're pretty similar for the most part, and I actually played through both as a four-player co-op experience with the same people. Action-packed, full of goofy humor and super fun co-op gameplay that will leave you recounting stories of your playthrough long after you reach the end credits, these games will keep you and your team laughing and screaming at each other from start to finish. In my particular case, my team left me to die so they could run to the helicopter to escape at the end of the first game, meaning I didn't get the Steam achievement and I had to replay the mission over on my own later. Thanks again, John! And finally, at number 86 is a game that needs no introduction whatsoever, Grand Theft Auto V. This is another one of those where I could easily include every game in the series, but let's be honest. GTA V takes the best parts of the previous games and just makes everything that much better. A hilarious cast of characters, rock solid gameplay, and an absolutely insane amount of freedom makes this game a must play for anyone who likes a wide open city to play around in with no rules. Full disclosure, I still have yet to actually finish the main story, because I always get too sidetracked just having fun running around and exploring. I'll get to it one day. So there you have it, guys, my uh, 90 through 86. We are making progress. That is 15 games down out of my top 100. And uh, it's, it's 
it's just been super fun putting this list together, getting to like look through all these games, and the the double edged sword part about it is that as I'm writing these like small little reviews for each one, um, it's well more of a look back than a review. But as I'm writing the, the little write-ups for them all, uh, I get the desire to just jump back into every single one of them and play it again. Um, uh, man, it's 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 just so nostalgic, and I, I love it. I love it. I love doing this, and it's it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, uh, next one should be coming out again next week. So look forward to that. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know if you've played any of these games. Uh, I assume you have at least one. Um, but let me know if, uh, if you, if I'm wrong or if any of these should have been higher up or not on the list at all or anything like that. It's probably too early to tell because I have so many more games to go through, but just tell me what you're thinking. I love to hear from you guys and I uh, love talking to you. So, uh, thanks for watching and as always keep on gaming.